he said you give two looks for the camera. One, like you're afraid of them. And then one, like you want to fuck them. I don't know if I'm doing the right looks, but I thought that was really cool. Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Kai Denise. I'm Kai Denise and I am currently living my vision board life. It's so weird to say and it has taken so much time for me to realize that I am living my dream life. And I wanna teach you how to make your vision board come to life so that you can live your dream life. And that's gonna come with shifting your mindset, developing tools and systems to help you achieve that, but also balancing that with happiness and relaxation. Life is so good. And I say that with the rainbows <laughs> that life can bring, but I also say that with the hardships and the sadness that life brings. Like I have been feeling so heavy and tired physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually lately. But I feel like even though I'm feeling these really heavy, tired, deep emotions, I'm still able to see how beautiful life is, how beautiful my family is, my friends are, how lucky I am to just like have so much. And even when I have a hard time, I'm still able to see how beautiful life is, how beautiful I get to have all of these incredible experiences. Garrett and I, we just got back from Canada. It was amazing. We stayed at the most beautiful Airbnb ever. It had windows all the way around and we were just immersed in nature and our Airbnb didn't have a TV at all. And so we didn't even like feel tempted to touch the TV. And it was just like so good to just slow down, have silence and connect with Garrett. On the trip, I also cried every day and Garrett said that one evening I cried every 10 minutes for three hours. So life is good, but life is hard. <laughs> and I hope that I don't give off that like everything is good. As I'm living my vision board life, don't think that I am free of pain. So don't be like, man, I wish I could live Kai's life. It's not pain free. Um, so yeah, I guess enough about that. Okay, so New York Fashion Week just happened in New York City. And as a fashion influencer, I just could not step out of the house without being inspired, without being overwhelmed, without feeling, I don't know, emotions just by like looking at people and seeing how they are expressing themselves creatively and emotionally through fashion. Day one of New York Fashion Week, I went to a food and fashion event where I was invited by the CEO and founder of Wear Brims, Archie Clay. Shout out to him, he's absolutely amazing. Um, him and I did some HBCU work in September of last year and um, I think our missions and our values just really aligned and he truly feels like family to me now. So I was honored to be able to go to that. It was my first time going to an event completely alone in the city. It was amazing. I was super nervous. I didn't know what to wear because it was like New York Fashion Week, but also it was like a day event and it was also like streetwear with like hats and Archie's hats. Um, so I didn't want to like overdress, but I didn't want to underdress. But you know, I was pretty happy with the outfit I put together. Got tons of compliments, but it was really, really cool talking to people about fashion and their fears of stepping out of the house in certain outfits or talking to people about the inspo that they're getting. There was one guy there who said that he was going for a Tyler the Creator look. And as soon as I saw him, I knew that he was doing. So it's just like cool to be talking about fashion and seeing how people express themselves. Um, I went to the event completely alone. I walked into the elevator. I took a deep breath and I had to tell myself, you can do this. <laughs> and it's just funny because like I physically spoke that out loud and I didn't think I was like that cheesy or corny of a person. But literally as those doors opened, I like released all of my air and I walked out and I was greeted with open arms. And it was just like such an incredible experience. And I met two amazing new girlfriends that I genuinely don't think I would have met. I met up with people and I asked them like, what is happening afterwards? And I heard about the after party. I'm blanking on the designer's name. It's like Jerome Lamar, Jerome Lamar. So I got me and my bestie and we snuck into the event, which is so crazy. 
Um, we had a screenshot of the event that was happening. They were like, you need wristbands to get in. We went down. We literally just like acted with confidence. Yeah, like here's our invite. And we got the bands slapped on our wrist and we went up and it was the time of my life. Like it was like stepping into everything that I wanted in my life. And so that's why I'm saying like, I'm living my vision board. I'm like, even though I had to sneak in, I am at a New York Fashion Week event after party where the lights are sexy and people are showing up and there's cameras like paparazzi and there's just people who like you want to be talking to, like the fast lifestyle. Um, and I felt really energized. I also love drag and there was a fire drag show, literally like gave me chills. I actually ended up walking on the runway, which is super embarrassing. Dom took a video of me and I refused to watch it because I'm so embarrassed. But you know, what? I'm just glad that I put myself out there and I'm trying new things. Um, that event was like so diverse, like seeing the LGBTQ community show up was amazing, seeing the black community show up, seeing minority community show up, and feeling like I'm in Manhattan in a predominantly minority space, feeling confident and calm and safe and connected was so empowering. The second New York Fashion Week event was a fashion show. The designer was Milan Breton, and it was absolutely stunning. This was like the first legit fashion show that I've ever been at, me and my best friend um, who invited me, so thank you. We literally got the best seats in the house. We got seats at the end of the catwalk, right where all of the photographers and the press were, and it was stunning. In fact, our legs made it onto Forbes. <laughs> um, so technically I've been in Forbes now. <laughs> modeling no just kidding my legs cameras were just like coming up to us taking photos because first off we looked fire and like to be dressed in fashion that like fully expressed me that i was so confident and excited to show up in and having the world reciprocate and say yes kai yes you're doing it right kai let's interview you like it was just like such a validating experience that i am close and i am living my vision board life but i'm close to making that like my life. I feel like I'm riding the balance of like corporate badass girly, but also like creative, famous, passionate girly. And so it's cool to, to be starting to index more over here. This guy that has clearly done a ton of fashion shows was like, you always have to be camera ready. And so he would just like sit there he was camera ready all the time. It was fun to like sit and learn about the things about being at a fashion show. He, he said you give two looks for the camera. One, like you're afraid of them. And then one, like you wanna fuck them. I don't know if I'm doing the right looks, but I thought that was really cool um, advice. And just again, like channeling a new like side of fashion and luxury and fast life and it was just like really cool. So the fashion show was amazing. There were pieces that literally just like spoke to my soul and spoke to my heart and I was like, I'm gonna be wearing those pieces one day. I'm going to be at the Met Gala. I'm gonna be at the Grammys wearing amazing pieces that like speak to my soul. So life goal, we'll see when we get there but it'll be fun to look back at this YouTube video and see how I manifested it and spoke it into existence. At the very end, uh, the designer actually came out and he was crying. And I got chills and honestly, I'm getting chills now thinking about it because I love to watch people live within their passions. Like my favorite things are to see my friends singing in the studio if they're a singer, are to see them hosting parties if they host parties, are to be creating fashion content on TikTok because that's what they wanna do. And so to see a designer at the peak of his accomplishments and working in his passions of having a New York Fashion Week event and walking out and crying and getting claps, I was like, I want that experience for me. I want that experience for you. Yeah, we all deserve that feeling. like getting interviewed by this white woman and she goes look at you standing next to that white woman and then <laughs> uh me and dom afterwards we just like grabbed a drink and she was talking about 
like what it means for us to be in these spaces as minority black women. And I was just like, damn, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for myself because this is what I want. I'm also doing it understanding that I am creating one more front row seat for another black person in the future. And like, that is incredible. 